हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू अवर चैनल करियर स्टॉक सो आर यू अ सीजन सीनियर बिजनेस एनालिस्ट इफ यस गेट रेडी फॉर एन एक्साइटिंग वीडियो वी हैव गैदर रियल सिनेरियो बेस्ड इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चंस फॉर बिजनेस एनालिस्ट अलोंग विद वैल्यूएबल टिप्स एंड एग्जांपल ऑन हाउ टू टैकल देम नाउ दीस क्वेश्चंस कम स्ट्रेट फ्रॉम एन ईवाई इंटरव्यू शेयर्ड बाय अ मेंबर ऑफ आवर व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप विद 20 प्लस इयर्स ऑफ टोटल आईटी एक्सपीरियंस so each question will answered step by step providing you with the confidence and preparation you need for your upcoming interview we are here to help so if you find this video useful leave a comment and show your support by hitting that like button want even more join our youtube paid membership starting as low as just 2 dollar per month and gain access to our exclusive whatsapp group and other perks so get ready to dive in and enhance your skills let's begin okay so the very first question is as a business analyst what are your thoughts on ai do you consider it to have a positive or negative implications do you anticipate ai replacing business analysts in the future and if so how do you perceive this change do you believe that the business analysts may feel insecure about their role please share your insight okay so this question can catch you off guard if you are not up to date with the latest trend and development in your field especially as a business analyst so it's crucial in today's rapidly evolving landscape to stay informed about new technologies tools and trends relevant to your role so here's a sample answer to help you to navigate this question please feel free to customize it expand it as you need it so the answer is when it comes to an ai i view it as a positive force with the potential to bring significant benefits so ai can automate task process data efficiently and provide valuable insight for a decision making so while ai technologies offer a great advantages i do not foresee them replacing business analysts entirely in the future so our role is more than just data analysis it involve critical thinking problem solving and collaboration with different stakeholders so these human skills are crucial for understanding the complex business challenges working closely with clients and translating those data insights into a actionable strategies so rather than displacing business analyst ai is more likely to augment our abilities and transform our work so we will need to adapt and acquire new skills to effectively leverage ai system this include understanding the limitation and biases of ai algorithms validating ai generated insights and effectively communicating implications to our client so change can sometimes bring uncertainty but i believe that business analysts who embrace ai and continually develop their skills will remain highly valuable so by combining human judgment with the ai power inside we can deliver context specific recommendations that drive meaningful outcomes for our clients so ai is a powerful tool no doubt but it can also greatly enhance the work of a business analyst it can automate tasks it can process data efficiently and provide valuable insight but i still believe that i do not anticipate ai replacing business analysts entirely instead it will reshape our role necessity adapting new skill acquisition and the ability to leverage ai technologies to deliver even more value to our client so friends i hope you understand the context you cannot say yes or no it's kind of mix answer which we have to provide to our interviewer it's very important nowadays that you should aware about what's happening around your uh specific to your role at least you know if you have don't have time so just take some time read some new stuff which is happening in your field okay so let's move on so in your role as a business analyst how would you prioritize requirements when faced with limited resource and tight timelines can you provide an example of a situation where you effectively manage such constraints and ensure the delivery of a critical requirement again as a ba you should 
have all these kind of uh, constraints in in a normal uh, day to day life right that the resource constraint time constraint lot of conflicts going to happen so this is again a pretty standard question which you can expect in any of your business analyst interview okay so what how we are going to approach it so as a as a business analyst when faced with the limited resources and tight timelines prioritizing requirements became crucial very important so to effectively manage such constraints i would follow a systematic approach that involves evaluating the impact urgency and the alignment of requirement with the project objective so let me give you an example so let's take a example of amazon and i will keep on using this example of amazon in upcoming questions as well so suppose uh, i am working on a project at amazon to enhance the customer checkout experience now the project aim to streamline the process reduce the card abandonment and increase the conversion rate but we have a limited development resources and a type type uh, timeline this is the requirement in this question right so what i'm going to do first yes as a business analyst what are we going to first tell me the first thing is requirement identification so first i would collaborate with stakeholders including the product manager ux designer and developer to identify all the requirements related to improving the checkout experience now this could include features like simplified payment option guest checkout and real time inventory updates what i will do next next i will assess the potential impact of each requirement on the project objectives so for example enabling a simplified payment options and guest checkout might have a higher impact on reducing the card abandonment and increasing the conversion rate what else we can do real time inventory updates so these kind of things are desirable but might have a lower impact on the immediate goal so this will not be our highest priority right the payment option will be our highest priority so this is just an assessment now what will be our third step so after assessing the impact i would evaluate the urgency of each requirement so in this case reducing the card abandonment and improving the conversion rates are time sensitive goals so the requirement directly contributing to these objectives would be considered more urgent what i will do next i will align with the project objective so i would also ensure that the prioritized requirement align closely with the project objective and align with the amazon overall business strategy so for example if the project primary objective is to enhance the customer experience requirements like simplified payment option would align well with this particular objective what next now the resource allocation part will come into picture now considering the limited development resources i would allocate resources based on the prioritized requirement so the high impact and the urgent requirement will receive higher resource allocation the capacity will be more ensuring that the critical aspect of the projects are addressed first so you can give an example let's say in a similar situation in the past i faced limited resources and a tight timelines while working on a e-commerce platform product page optimization project so by following the prioritization approach mentioned above we successfully deliver a critical requirement within the constraint so one of the key requirement was implementing a responsive design to enhance the mobile user experience so while we had a limited uh, development resources we recognized that the high impact and the urgency of this requirement so we allocated a dedicated development team and collaborate closely with them to ensure timely delivery now this involved conducting regular meetings setting clear expectations and closely monitor the complete progress so by effectively managing the constraints of limited resources and tight timeline we prioritize critical requirements and deliver the responsive design for mobile users on schedule now this significant improvement will help us which results in increasing the conversion and customer satisfaction so in the last as a business analyst i will prioritize the requirement by assessing their impact urgency and alignment with project objective by effectively managing the constraint in the past such as a limited resource and tight timelines i have ensured the delivery of critical requirements and achieve project goals 
So this kind of behavioral questions will definitely come in your business analyst interview. And this is, I think we have covered a lot of things, all the steps in this. So yeah, I think this is a fairly a uh, good answer for this particular question. Let's move on. Okay, another scenario based question. So friends, you will not get a simple line. Okay, what is a BRD? What is FRD? Or how you do that? Or tell me the two, three matrices, right? They will always give you some kind of scenarios and then you have to you know, answer accordingly. If you are into a consulting role or a, if you're just you know, going for interviews for this, these kind of companies. Okay, so the question is, imagine you are working as a business analyst for a healthcare organization, implementing a new electronic medical record system. How would you ensure the system meets the necessary regulatory and compliance requirement? Can you describe a situation where you successfully ensured regulatory compliance in the previous project? Again, very important question related to compliance and all. If you are working for USA client uh, in, in some medical field, or if you are working for banking client, BFSI domain, you can expect this kind of question. Yeah, especially if you are working uh, for some other vendors as well. So for in this case, let's say EY. So EY generally send their uh, business analysts to some other uh, clients, right? So they have to very strict uh, NDAs, non-disclosure agreement, this and that in place. So that's why I think this is again a very relevant question for the business analyst perspective. Okay, let's see uh, how we can answer that. So as a business analyst working on the implementation of a new electronic medical record system for a healthcare organization, ensuring the regulatory and the compliance requirement is very important. So to achieve this, I would follow a systematic approach so the very first step is I will conduct a regulatory research. So I would thoroughly research the applicable regulations and compliance standard in the healthcare industry, such as HIPAA and GDPR. So people, if you are new, I'm sure like 100% of the people have heard this term HIPAA, but still HIPAA is nothing but the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act and the GDPR, which is into Europe nowadays general data protection regulation. So these are the two important uh, terms which should, you should know as a BA. Okay, let's continue with the answer. So uh, this would help me, this would enable me to understand the specific requirements and guidelines that need to be adhered to that, that need to be adhered during the implementation process. So the very first thing is conduct the research, regulatory research. The second thing is we should collaborate with the legal and compliance team. So. As a BA, I would work closely with the organization legal and compliance team to gain a comprehensive understanding of the specific regulatory and the compliance requirement that need to be met. Now, this collaboration ensures that the, all the aspect of the project align with the organization legal obligation. Sometimes you think something else, but then we have an entire legal and compliance team in all the organizations. So it's very important that you check your understanding with them, if they have some other extra clause and this and that, right? It's very important. Uh, the third thing is what we'll do after this. Then, of course, the gap analysis. So as a BA, I would conduct a detailed analysis of the new electronic medical record system and compare it against the relevant regulatory requirements. Now, this helps to identify any gaps or areas that need improvements to ensure compliance. So for example, ensuring data encryption, user access control, audit trails, and data retention policies are in, in line with the regulatory guidelines or not. So I will do that. And then what will happen? What will be the result? Of course, I will develop a compliance recommendation. So I would create a comprehensive documentation that outline how the electronic medical record system meets the regulatory and the compliance requirement. Now this documentation would include policies, procedures, and guidelines for data handling, privacy, security, and data breach response. Now, this will help to ensure the transparency and the accountability throughout the implementation process. So it's very important to document is what is your understanding, right? So that will be the uh, my step. Now, what next? The other important thing is training and education programs. So. As a BA, I would work with the organization training and education uh, teams to develop a training program for employees who will be using the new system. Now, this training would emphasize the importance of regulatory compliance, data privacy, and security best practices. 
it will ensure that the all staff members are aware of the responsibilities in maintaining the compliance so uh, to give you an example let's say a situation where i successfully ensured a regulatory compliance in a previous project so let's consider an example let's say abc hospital so as a business analyst i was a part of a project team implementing a new electronic health record system at abc hospital and in this project i have to ensure that the uh, uh, compliance with the hipaa regulations was very crucial and has to be met so to ensure the compliance i conducted a extensive research on hipaa requirements and collaborated closely with the hospital legal and compliance team we conducted a compliance gap analysis identify areas where the existing system fell short of the hipaa requirements so for example we discovered that certain patient data access control need to be strengthened they are not that much secure so based on the analysis we uh, develop a comprehensive set of policies procedures guidelines we put some implement uh, different tools as well you know and this included implementing stricter uh, more uh, stricter access controls which ensure that the proper data encryption and also establish a audit trails for a system activity monitoring so these are the things which we have done in in the in that particular project uh of course uh, in collaboration with the hospital training team we also conducted training systems for all the staff members involved in using the electronic health record system so the training emphasizes the importance of maintaining a hipaa compliance and provide guidance on the data privacy and security practices so by following this approach we successfully ensured regulatory compliance throughout the implementation process and the new electric health record system at abc hospital met the necessary hipaa requirements safeguarding patient data and maintaining the hospital legal obligations so i think uh, we have covered lot of thing in this and you can you will definitely get this kind of question especially with the us or canada clients yeah okay let's move on oh yes so friends uh, if you have reached this point it would be awesome if you could give that like a little tap is is there so we spend lot of uh, our efforts tons of efforts into crafting these sessions and we will just asking for little appreciation nothing else so if you hit that like button that one like means a lot to us and serve a great source of motivation so go ahead and click that like button yeah i'm i'm just waiting you have not hit that like yeah hit that hit that now yes yes yeah thank you thank you okay let's let's move on okay uh next question as a business analyst i have been assigned to a project yeah xyz retail to enhance their online shopping platform please outline the key steps you would take to gather requirement and ensure they are aligned with the goals and objective again as a ba because most of the time you are involved in requirement gathering is and that of course you will get this kind of one question for sure so all these four five questions which we are discussing here is like a kind of must kind of you know kind of questions you will definitely going to have especially if you are a senior uh, business analyst of course that for sure you should at least know all this these this kind of question will be repeated again and again so okay let let's see the answer like how we can approach this so as a business analyst uh, assigned to a project of xyz retail to enhance their online shopping platform always first of all try to rephrase the question which was asked to you so the you should know okay what is the problem statement and the other person should also know that okay you understand the problem statement yeah so let's see how we can uh, approach this uh, question so as a as a business analyst assigned to the project for xyz retail to enhance their online shopping platform i would follow a systematic approach to gather the requirement and ensure the alignment with the goals and objective of the company so here are the key steps i would take so what is the first step project initiation so what do we do in a project initiation we meet with the key stakeholders we include a management marketing team it personnel customer service representative to understand the overall vision and the goal of the project you will get lot of different different inputs from all these different different roles so it's very important to meet all these key stakeholders now what you will do second we have to familiarize ourselves as a pa 
the current state of the XYZ retail online shopping platform and any existing pain points or limitations. That should be our focus area. What else? Now we have to define the scope of the project. Identify the specific areas or the functionality that need improvement. You cannot improve everything in one go. So identify top three, top five, you know, things like that. Okay, so let's say in this case, in this uh, ABC retail, XYZ retail, let's say the management has identified the need to improve the platform user interface, optimize the checkout process and enhance the personalization capabilities, okay? So that is the first step. Now in the second step, of course, the requirement elicitation. So what we're going to do in that, we will conduct the interviews, workshop and the surveys with the different stakeholders to gather their expectations, preferences, and the pain point related to the online shopping experience. Then what we'll do, we will then analyze the competitor platform, what those people are doing. We will try to see the industry trend where we are heading and the customer feedback to identify the best practices and the innovative features that can be incorporated. Now, after that, what we are going to do, we will do that. We can use to create a personas. So we can create user personas and conduct the user research to understand the needs, the behavior, and the motivation of XYZ retail target customers. So you can say that, uh, for example, you can say that during this phase, I would analyze this online shopping platform to understand its user-friendly interface, smooth checkout process, and personalized uh, recommendation as a benchmark for XYZ retail requirements. So you can compare, let's say, Amazon online shopping platform with XYZ retail, uh, retail platform. So you can do those kind of uh, comparison. Now, what you'll do next, we will now do the analysis requirement. Okay, we have, have all those things, but now we have to do the analysis and the documentation part. So we'll organize and analyze, uh, analyze the gathered information to identify the common patterns, uh, prioritize requirements, and define function and the non-function requirement. Then we collaborate with the development team to assess the technical feasibility. Sometimes PA forget it. They just create a documentation, then just send it to the development team. No, you should work hand in hand, okay? So we collaborate with the development team to assess the technical feasibility, considering the existing infrastructure and the potential integration requirements, okay? And once we get the go ahead, then we document the requirement in a clear and concise manner using the techniques such as user stories or use case or process flow is up to you, but whatever you want to use. So uh, you can take an example that, okay, I would uh, document the requirement of XYZ retail online shopping platform to have a responsive design that adapt to our various devices, simplified uh, navigation, a streamlined checkout process with multiple payment options and a recommendation engine based on the customer preferences and the browsing history. So that will be my uh, output from this uh, exercise. Now, what will next we will do as a BA? So we will do a validation of our requirement and how we can do that. So we'll conduct a review session with the stakeholders to ensure that the documented requirement accurately captures their needs and expectations. It's very important that we take a buy-in from them in this particular state. So we can use some uh, prototypes or a wireframes to visualize, uh, represent the proposed changes and gather the feedback. Now we seek input from technical experts to validate the feasibility and potential impact of the requirement. So in collaboration with uh, XYZ retail stakeholders, I would review the documented requirement, shared wireframes of the proposed user interface changes and gather feedback to ensure that they align with the desired user experiences. What next? Then I will do the requirement management. So I have to establish a, a RTM, a requirement traceability matrix, to track the relationship between the requirement, design, and test cases. Then I will continuously communicate with the stakeholders to address any changes or updates to requirement throughout the project lifecycle. And then I will also collaborate with the project managers and the development team to ensure that the requirements are properly implemented and tested. So as a project progresses, I would maintain regular communication with the stakeholders of XYZ Retail, update the traceability matters to reflect any changes and provide clarification to the development team during the implementation and testing phases. So by following these steps, I would ensure that the requirements gathering process is thorough, 
align with the goals and objectives of xyz retail and sets the foundation for successfully enhancing their online shopping platform okay i think uh, we have given a elaborated answer let's move on okay so you are working as a business analyst for a consulting firm and you have been assigned to a project for a client name abc corp abc corp wants to improve their inventory management system how would you identify and define the solution design based on the requirement gathered what tools or technique would you employ or use to accomplish this okay again a great question so how we are going to approach this okay let's see the sample answer so as a ba my role in the project for abc corp is to enhance their inventory management system always rephrase the problem statement first then you jump to your answer okay okay so to identify and uh, define the solution design based on the requirement gathered i would follow a again a systematic approach so let's break it down using a example of amazon so let's see how we can do uh, go about it so the very first thing is understand the current state so the first step is to understand the current inventory management system of this abc corp this involved analyzing their existing process system data flow and uh, for instance i would examine how the amazon currently manage their inventory across various warehouses and distribution center then what next next i will conduct a stakeholder interview and workshop to gather the detailed requirement now this will involve interacting with abc corp employees from warehouse managers to it staff to understand their pain points challenges and desired outcome so using amazon as a reference i might explore how their inventory management system handles real time stock updates order fulfillment and integration with the suppliers so these are the few things normally most of our pas i have seen they are not doing this stuff they just talk to one or two key stakeholder that's it which is not right okay so what next after this we are going to do so after gathering the requirements i would analyze and prioritize them based on their impact and feasibility so this could include understanding the understanding the needs of abc corp and identify any potential risk or constraints uh, drawing inspiration from amazon or i could consider prioritizing features like automated refilling uh, demand forecasting and a real time inventory tracking after that once requirements are prioritized i would begin designing the solution now this may involve creating a process flow diagram data model and system architecture diagram so taking the cues from amazon practice i would propose a solution that include a centralized inventory database integration with abc corp existing erp system and a user friendly interface for managing the inventory the next step is to validate the solution design with the stakeholders so this can be done through design review prototype and feedback session so i would demonstrate how the proposed design align with the requirements gathered and show it potential benefits so the refinement would be made based on the feedback received you have to ensure that the design meet the abc corp needs while drawing inspiration from the amazon successful inventory management practices so we are taking the cues we are taking the help from the amazon inventory management but in line with the abc corp needs right then on the tool and technique so uh, to 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 accomplish this i would uh, use different tools and techniques such as stakeholder interview and workshop so i will facilitate the discussion and gather the insight from the abc corp employees process flow diagram so i will visualize the current and the proposed inventory management process then the design and the structure and the relationship of the inventory data this can be done by the help of data modeling and then of course uh, in the system architecture diagram that will show that will propose the solution technical components and the integration points and then uh, we have some prototyping tools so we will that will going to help to in creating the interactive prototypes to demonstrate the solution functionality then we have requirement management software so we have different tools to document to track and prioritize the requirement throughout the project so we can use jira world confluence and this and that now there's a lot of things out there in the market so by following this approach and utilizing the appropriate tools and technique i would be able to identify and define a comprehensive solution designed for abc corp inventory management system leveraging the successful practice observed at amazon so this could be the one sample answer for this question 
okay do let me know in the comment uh, what you think about these answers and if you want to add something or if i forget to add something please feel to you know help us as well okay uh let's move on yeah so the next question is you have been assigned to a project for client x an e-commerce company which aim to enhance their website conversion rate how would you approach this task to achieve the client goal okay is very important question uh very difficult challenging also for me so if you don't know the exact uh, uh, terms and then it will be very difficult okay let's see uh how we can respond to this question okay and friends all these uh, answers which i am uh, giving you uh, i have already consulted one or two other bas and then only and again my understanding whatever the experience i have uh, i'm just sharing with you okay so but again feel free to add uh, modify whatever you want okay so uh, as a ba uh, assigned to a project for client x an e-commerce company focusing on enhancing their website conversion rate i would approach the task in a following steps again rephrase the problem statement first then you approach your answer okay so first i would uh, collaborate with the key stakeholders from the client x to clearly define the project scope this would involve understanding their specific goals and objective related to improving the conversion rate so for example let's say the client aim to increase the number of visitors who make a purchase on their website specifically within the electronic category okay so let's take an example let's say at amazon a uh, a uh, similar project could involve improving the conversion rate of their electronic specific section by increasing the percentage of visitor who successfully complete a purchase then we all know we'll do the user research next i would conduct a in depth analysis of the website existing data and perform user research to gain insight into user behavior preferences and pain point now this step would involve utilizing various analytical tools and methods to identify patterns and areas for improvement so for example analyzing the click through rate bounce rate and conducting user surveys or interviews okay so you should know what is click through rate or bounce rate okay so uh, let's say in this uh, amazon project i would analyze data related to user interaction with the electronic category such as click through rates add to cart rate and conversion rate additionally i would also conduct a user research to gather feedback on user experience and uh, potential barriers to make a purchase yeah and then based on the data analysis and user research i would then identify the potential conversion barrier on this website so this could include factors such as a complicated checkout process lack of product information or slow page loading or maybe the unclear call to action button so there may be a number of reasons so what next once the once i have identified the barriers right then i would work with the project team to develop a conversion optimization strategy now this strategy would involve proposing a specific action and recommendation to address the identified barriers and improve the website conversion rate now this action could include redesigning the checkout process optimizing the product description or improving the page load time or adding a trust signal during the payment process now after the this particular conversion optimization strategy which is defined i would now collaborate with the development and design team to implement the changes on the website so it is crucial to conduct thorough testing to ensure that the modification are effective and do not introduce the new issues or new bugs right after that once the changes are implemented of course we have to now monitor and measure the result so once all these changes are implemented i would closely monitor and measure the impact on the website conversion rate now this involved tracking key metrics analyzing user feedback and conducting uh, different testing to evaluate the effectiveness of the modification so i will also ensure that the regular reporting and communication with the stakeholders would is very important to keep them informed of the progress and the outcomes after that what we can do so based on the results and the feedback gathered i would now continue to iterate and redefine the conversion optimization strategy it's not like you have just done one time and that's it no 
we it's a iterative improvement please understand friends it's a iterative process so this iterative process <clears throat> ensure that the continuous improvement and maximize the return on investment for client x so it involves analyzing the data identify the new opportunities for optimization and making further enhancement into this website <clears throat> what else we can do after this so so throughout the project <clears throat> it is important and essential to document this whole process <clears throat> methodologies and finding to ensure that the knowledge sharing within the organization it's very important to document all these things which you have implemented so the other people in future they know okay this is the purpose of this so this <clears throat> document serve as a reference for future optimization efforts and definitely they are help, going to help to maintain the consistency in the approach okay now what else we can do about this yes so even <clears throat> even after the project is completed it is crucial it's important to continue monitor the website performance and provide a ongoing support to address any new challenges or opportunities that may arise so to ensure uh, the sustainability of the optimized conversion rate and allows for further refinement as needed okay so by following all these steps as a ba i would approach the task of enhancing the conversion rate for client tax and e-commerce company through data analysis user research strategy development implementation testing iterative improvement and the goal would be to optimize the website conversion rate and to ultimately increase the number of visitors who can make a purchase and contribute to the success of a client tax online business friends i am giving you a elaborated answer it's up to you you want to short it down you want to remove one or two steps it's up to you okay do not think that okay i am giving you a so long answer and shall we replicate the same thing to the in the in the uh, interviews again it's depend on your experience if you are fresher we will not going to expect this huge you know long answer but if you are experience if you already into like your uh, 15 years or 20 years or 25 years of experience yes maybe we will yeah, expect this kind of answers from you okay okay so yes that's it so spread the love good vibes show your support by smashing that like button and leave a comment and don't forget to share your interview questions and let's help each other yeah that's it so see you next week bye guys thank you